I wanted to create this vase out of plaster. Though it's very small. Since it's plaster, it doesn't even hold water. But it's a good example. I've created other things also. I could have made it out of plastic, but I much prefer plaster for my creations. Plaster is, just has a nicer feel of weight to it. I'm not talking about soft crumbly plaster, the kind you may have played with as a child. The kind you can score with a fingernail. I'm talking about a kind of plaster that's almost as hard as concrete and you certainly can't score it with your fingernail. It's also as white as alabaster. I'm not sure what exactly alabaster is, but I've heard it's quite white. I tried to create the simplest vase I could, but I clearly failed. It's much more complicated than it needs to be. In reality, most vases these days are. The earliest Sumerian vases are just simple pots to place things like nice flowers in. Not the marvels of technology we see today. Creating plaster sculptures is harder than creating 3D printed sculptures. Typically when casting plaster you first create a silicon mold. And after that you cast the plaster into the mold. And if you fail with the design and you have to iterate then you've wasted all that silicon. And also the, um, the process of casting silicon molds are, is quite messy and, and cumbersome. The silicone is extremely sticky and possibly toxic in the uncured form. Don't get me wrong, it's great if you want to make many pieces, but for one off it's overkilly. I wanted an easier way of casting plaster. I wanted to quickly iterate on designs and cast variants. It'd be cool to have every vase be unique in some way. And I can't decide whether to pronounce it vase or vase, so I'll alternate as appropriate. The reason you typically cast plaster or concrete in silicone molds is that the molds are soft, so soft. You can extract the model from the soft mold without causing damage. 3D printed molds are hard, well hard-ish, especially compared to delicate plaster pieces. The plaster forms a strong mechanical bond with the nooks and crannies of the 3D printed surface. The plaster doesn't form a chemical bond such as superglue would. It's a pure mechanical bond, but still strong enough to break any small details and even larger details may be damaged. It's very difficult to extract the model from a 3D printed mold, unless the 3D printed mold can be made soft. Softening PLA, the material 3D printed molds are made from, is easier than expected. You simply boil it in regular tap water. More on that later. Mold design typically requires that there are no overhangs and that there are proper draft angles. Overhangs are when two pieces lock together like hooks making them impossible to separate. When either the mold or the sculpture is soft, overhangs are less of an issue. Imagine that this orange part is the mold and this white is the cast part. In this case, there is an overhang and the pieces can't be separated. In this case, there are no overhangs and they can be pulled apart even though it may require some effort. Small defects in the surface may still create enough friction to stick them together. In this case, we even have a proper draft angle where they easily come apart. Some materials require draft angles, and you can see the draft angles in, for instance, injection molded plastic parts. To work around overhangs, you can create multiple molds. The simplest form is called a two part mold. The next most complicated form is called a three part mold. This here is a one part mold, an even simpler form. This one has failed because the draft angles weren't sufficient and the piece got stuck in the... With multi-part molds, each mold must 
typically avoid overhangs, at least locally, but together they can have overhangs. As long as each mold can be removed without damag uh, damaging the piece, it's all good. For the vase I designed, I'm using a two-part mold. I'm also adding alignment structures where the mold parts meet, so it's easier to align them properly. The parts must be designed so that they can be easily printed. I found that using supports is a nightmare and not worth the effort. Seam lines between the mold parts will be visible in the final piece. If you can hide them on the model by placing them along creased edges, they will be less visible. If you're building a house, you can place the seams along the corners. When you design your piece, you first design the actual piece. This won't be a Fusion 360 modeling tutorial. Uh, I'm simply creating a really simple house with a couple of a door and a couple of windows. Then you create a mold and subtract the piece from the mold. You will have to plan for where you're supposed to pour in the plaster. Typically on a sculpture you pour the plaster through the base of the sculpture, the part that sits against the floor. But for things like boats it's not as obvious where to pour in the plaster. The pour location must be at the top of the mold when you're pouring, otherwise you'll be stuck with air inside the mold. You must also plan for how to extract the piece from the mold. You could create a solid mold that doesn't come in pieces and try to cut the mold with a hot knife in the end, but I recommend against using anything sharp in this process. The plastic is tougher than you'd expect and your flesh is vulnerable. It will also behoove you to create some alignment structures. Here I'm creating a piece that will stick out at 45 degrees so it's easy to print. And then I am subtracting that shape from the opposite side of the mold. Then I inset the faces slightly so they don't collide. And this will help me hold the pieces together while I'm performing the casting. And when I say that I inset it slightly, I mean a tenth of a millimeter or even half of that. When printing the molds, you must change some settings. With default settings, it's difficult to demold. Default settings are designed to give you stiff and strong parts. Well, that's the opposite of what we want. I've created a 3D print setting in Prusa Slicer I called Melty. I use three top layers, three bottom layers and zero for minimum shell th thickness. I use a fill density of 16% and I use a fill pattern called Lightning where it only adds infill where it's required to support the layers above. If you try this yourself, let me know in the comments down below what settings worked for you. I've tried other filaments like PVA Plus and Flexfill, but both failed badly. In the box in the background, I have a few spools of PCL filament, which is supposed to melt at 60 degrees Celsius or 140 degrees Fahrenheit, which could make things even simpler. I haven't had the chance to try it yet though, so uh, stay tuned for that. To cast the piece, the molds are aligned and the seams are taped up with the masking tape. A dam at the top of the mold makes it easier to add the plaster. Rubber bands keep the seams tight. If the seams are sloppy they will be more flashing. But you don't want to compress the mold so hard that it warps. As you can see, I think I broke four rubber bands before giving up. The tape-up job wasn't very good and the missing rubber bands together had some sad effects, as you'll see shortly. I use Fusion 360 to determine the volume of the model. But 
Always prepare more plaster than you think you'll need. Wasted plaster is cheaper than a wasted model. The plaster I use is called Ceramics Exclusive and has a working time of 6 minutes, which sounds like a lot but sometimes isn't enough. Vibrating the mold is important because it lowers the viscosity of the plaster in a process called liquefaction. It allows air bubbles to reach the top and the plaster to reach all parts of the mold. Here the effects of the poor taping job are becoming obvious. I'm having serious leaks. This very rarely happens and it isn't a really big problem in this case because I can just scoop it up and keep going. But if you're short on plaster this can be a real disaster. After the working time has passed, I let the model rest for about 3 or 4 minutes. Then I screw the top of the model and try to flatten the exposed surface using a wet finger. The model is set aside to harden. The plaster I use hardens completely after 8 hours. Now it's time for demolding. At the boiling point of water, PLA becomes soft, but plaster is unaffected. Boil the molded model until the PLA becomes soft and then gently pull on the mold pieces with pliers. I use a thick glove and meat tongs for protection. Note that these molds are one time use. There is no chance of using them again. Sometimes you need to dunk the pieces several times in the boiling water. But if, if you designed it correctly, all pieces should come off without damage to the model. If it seems impossible to remove a mold piece without breaking the piece, you may have to modify the design. Demolding typically takes a couple of minutes and multiple pieces can be demolded at the same time. This process is dangerous and you, sh you may spill boiling water on yourself. So wear appropriate clothing and exercise caution. This part isn't appropriate for children to participate in. Using this technique, I can go from an idea to a complete piece in less than 24 hours, including 3D printing and plaster cost uh, curing time. Larger and more complex models would of course take longer. The finished pieces have distinct layer lines as witness marks to the process. I personally don't mind this, but there are ways to reduce these artifacts. There are however print orientations where the layer lines become ugly and, distraction and distracting, so you may have to consider that as you orient your prints on the printer bed. More complex structures can be made, for instance I've created sculptures of houses, heads and boats. Some of these sculptures are hollow, which allow you to place lights inside them. This can be done using what's called a core. But more on that in future videos. I'm happy with how this vase come out, though it's less intricate and ornamental than my typical sculptures. But wait, there's more. These pieces aren't actually made of plaster, they're made out of clay. They're actually slip cast in molds that I cast using 3D printed molds. Slip casting is a process where you mix clay with, uh, with water and a uh, chemical that makes the, the clay run better. And then you fill a plaster container with the slip. Uh, it's called slip. And then you let it sit in the, in the mold for a while. So the mold absorbs the moisture from the wet clay and it deposits a uh, thin clay vessel inside and this is how many vases are made probably vases that you own uh, cut mugs and, and, and things like that <laughs>
You let it sit for a couple of minutes and it absorbs the water. I made a mistake here because the uh, the mold on the right, the, the white mold, is very fresh. I uh, I boiled it earlier today, so it's still wet and it doesn't absorb the water from the clay as well as the one on the left, which is very dry because it's been sitting around for a while. And um, this is what happens when you don't let the mold dry sufficiently. You, <laughs> you tear the piece apart. But don't worry about it, it's clay. I can, mix a, I can let it dry out and just mix another batch and, and put it back in. The second one, you get to see what it's supposed to look like. The next step is, of course, to fire the piece in a, in a kiln. But I don't have one of those, so uh, all I have are these clay <laughs> pieces that crumble if you look at them too hard. I have uh, two more advanced vases that I haven't been able to cast yet. Uh, hoping to do that tomorrow, so maybe in the next video. Hope you found this interesting. I may create more detailed videos of how particular sculptures are made. Do leave a comment if you have any ideas or if you tried using boil molds for a project. Thanks for watching.